Hello and welcome to feeding part one. I decided to separate feeding into two halves because there really is so much and we can have a cup of coffee in the middle. <laughs> okay, so feeding is just that. It is just feeding your baby. Nothing more, nothing less. People get so emotive about it. Breastfeeding, there's no doubt about it. Breastfeeding is best if you can do it, but there's lots of reasons people can't. But You'll get so upset about it, people get very emotional about it, but in all honesty, by the time your child is 5, 6, 7, 12, you'll even forget about it. So all we're trying to do here is to feed your baby, let you enjoy feeding your baby, because that's a very, very important part of feeding. It should be pleasurable, it should be nice, and it's a bonding time, and a pleasurable time. So I'm not going to judge. Uh, as I think I've mentioned before, I was a field breastfeeder. I come from a long line of field breastfeeders. My grandmother, and for those of you counting on their fingers, will know that's about 19, 1920s, 100 years ago. And she was a field breastfeeder. And in those days, you know, it was a serious thing. You breastfed if you possibly could, and sometimes it really doesn't happen. And actually, she lost one of her babies due to brucellosis which is uh, due to milk that isn't properly pasteurised. So not being a breastfeeding mother in those days was a really big thing. There have been wet nurses since time immemorial. Some were used socially because it was considered that ladies of a delicate disposition, or uh, not delicate disposition, sorry, wealthy, basically, didn't have to do breastfeeding. They got somebody else to do it. Um, and as I say, some people just don't like it. So, And some people don't have a milk supply. Um, I think in my particular family, uh, there has been a, a, an imbalance of hormones, because you know we have two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Um, and those of us who are pretty good in estrogens, uh, who could just get pregnant with a, oh, let's have a baby, boom, it happened. And which would be myself, my mother and my grandmother. Uh, we all had difficulty with the progesterone side of feeding, whereas my daughter, I'm very proud of. It's the first in four generations who managed to breastfeed her children, but uh, she didn't get pregnant just like the rest, but just like that. And she found it quite difficult. So breastfeeding isn't always just lovely and easy. It can be quite painful and take a bit of time to get used to. So it's in two halves, really. There's a little bit at the bottom. So those who aren't breastfeeding, you don't have to listen to this bit, just sort of skip on. Uh, for breastfeeders, however, you do need to know about bottles because you never know when something can happen. You get sick, you have an accident, all sorts of things happen. So you need to know how to make up bottles and the theory behind it. So for breastfeeding, we're not going to go into too much as we're not going to go into too much of anything like this. There are libraries filled with stuff. But basically, the, the basic things about breastfeeding. First one is you do not store the milk like a cow. We don't have udders. We create the milk as the baby sucks. What we do have is because there's the gland here, it's like a sort of ball, and it in this bit, this is where the milk is produced. Sometimes a little bit's produced and it goes down the tube into a little tear ducty bit here, which is just behind the nipple, probably that way, mm, running out of hands. And this is the bit the baby sucks on. And that's what can make you feel full. But it doesn't fill up, it's just a little bit uh, of this cell sort of overproducing. A baby does not suck like we suck a straw. They feed entirely differently. So if you think of this as uh, a baby's mouth, and this is where the tongue is. No, that way. There's the teeth, the tongue. Um, when the nipple comes, you, they don't suck straw like us. We go, go on. For a baby, the nipple has to go right into the back, way back of soft palate. So if you run your finger along your own mouth, there's a hard bit in the head and there's a soft bit. That is where the nipple has to be. Because the nipple is, as you may have noticed, extremely sensitive. The body of the breast, which will have an alveola, but that's where the, the rings occur when you're pregnant, when they get bigger and darker. The little egg, your nipple here, gets a bit darker there. That is where the baby's gum should be. And a baby feeds by clamping down with the teeth and sweeping down its throat. With his tongue very different motion so it's a chomp and sweep chomp and sweep and that's why you see with that is how a baby feeds 
So positioning is extremely important breastfeeders. Make sure that nipple is well back in the mouth. It should not hurt. Might just nip a little bit at the beginning, but once you get started, it should not hurt. The sensitive bit should be way back here and the body here is where the baby sort of chomps down. If, of course, the nipple is not far enough in, it will get squashed by the tongue and rub and that is very detrimental to the tender skin of the nipple. Second one is, which I'm sure you're hearing about, it's all about positioning. So this is a breast. <laughs> you must let the breast sit at its own angle. It's what is commonly called the angle of the dangle. So you don't lift it up, twist or anything. It just is as it is. And it's generally a little bit like that. When you introduce the baby to the breast, you let you bring the two together. You lean forward a little bit, let the baby nuzzle a bit and he will go for it. <laughs> and take a proper fix so that the gums are back and the nipple is protected. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of videos, uh, organisations and things to look into. That is the basic thing. Make sure the positioning is right. That is a secret to good breastfeeding. You feed alternatively from side to side. As I mentioned, the milk is sort of produced in these cells, these sort of circular cells and runs down a little tube. But bacteria is with us at all times and we do not want that to multiply. So you want to make sure you empty each side. So just feed away happily. Now, there are several stages to a breastfeed. The first one is the four milk and that's when the baby's really hungry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they go for it because they want the bulk in. And that's, if you like, the body of the milk. And then at the back comes the hind milk, which is like in the old fashioned days when you have milk and cream on the top. It goes back to front with us. So... The body goes in first so the baby sort of gets past the, oh, I'm starving. And then at the end, they flutter feed. That's flutter feeding. And that's because the cream, the thickness is coming down. It takes time for it to be manufactured, come down the tubes. So that is all right. That flutter feeding is very important. If you cut that short, you will not satisfy the baby. He'll go to sleep for less time than he should do. So flutter feeding is important and it is worth letting it continue until the baby falls asleep or lets go and you will know when the feed is over. So positioning, empty each side and allow the baby to finish. Um, other things breastfeeders have to be aware of, as you mentioned before, signs of mastitis, hardness, lumps, redness, pain, all of those things can mean that one of these little milk sacs has got a little bit infected. If you think there's a hard bit, you even though it's not that side's turn, feed from that side. Because sometimes with the with the bad position, you've twisted a little bit and all the tubes have got properly emptied with the baby. So feed again. If that doesn't clear it out, ring the doctor and get antibiotics. Because again, that's one of our dangerous signs, if you remember from the, um, the early tip. Uh, the last one I think we have to talk about with breastfeeding mums is crack you know, nipple problems. So you can get crack nipples, which are generally due to uh, overuse in, in the early days and bad positioning. So if you get a crack, very best thing to do is to express a little bit of milk at the end of the feed, wrap it on and let it dry in the nipple. And what most people do is they just wear a big loose shirt. You know, do not frighten the postman, please. <laughs> and the final thing to look out for is thrush because the baby can get thrush in the mouth so too you can go in your nipple. So if one of you has thrush, both of you have to be treated, and that is a phone call. In a nipple, it becomes red, tender, and shiny, and that's the sign of a fungal infection in the mum. The baby, of course, the mouth gets the white spots. Right, so that's a very, very fast run through um, breastfeeding. Now we're on to bottle feeding. Bottle feeding, um, Everybody is at some stage going to give a baby a bottle, even the most enthusiastic breastfeeder. Generally, you just have to know how to do it. So there are lots and lots of videos on the web as to how to do it. But you will find that things have changed. Your mums and grands have said, look, look the way we did it. We made up seven bottles and put them in the fridge. Yes, we did. But nowadays we have a worry about another virus, which is sort of laughable to what we're going through now, but really it is very dangerous. And it's called norovirus and it's a tummy bug and it's a nasty tummy bug. So people have looked into this and thought, oh my goodness, 
uh, the baby milk isn't sterile because once you open it and you've got the scoop and I'm not going to how to make it up just look on the video but in previous days you made up a bottle with cool boiled water up to the mark and put in the appropriate, appropriate number of scoops gave it a shake and off you went because of norovirus they decided that you had to make up the baby milk with boiling water so this is why they ask you to make it up um, at the time so you have to put the boiling water in then you put the baby milk in give it a shake and then cool it down now really um i never had any problems with people making bottles up properly and in my experience and this is not necessarily towing the line but it's up to you to make your decision i think making up to about three bottles at a time is okay if you make them properly you use a sterilized bottle you make them up in the appropriate way with boiling water you put the sterilized cap on and you know with the teat inverted the cap the lid put it in the bottom of the fridge i cannot see how that can cause any problems so it does make it a bit easier at night when you're sort of running up and down. So you make your own decision on that. There are bottle makers out there, you know, the machines, they're great. Um, so make up your own mind on that. But that is what we're trying to prevent. Norovirus, okay? Bottle feeding. <laughs> I know, okay, with the baby. Um, there are lots of different teats out there. Now you know how a baby feeds with the clamping down and the sleeping back. You'll see why the teats are quite long. Different babies like different things. Um, we tend to favour an orthopaedic one because it doesn't change the shape of the baby's mouth. Babies love a big ball, but if you can get them to take the orthopaedic one, you feel that's sort of better for the development of the mouth. But they're, they're all approved, so it doesn't really matter. How you introduce the baby to the bottle, there are various ways to feed. Now, most people, because I'm left-handed, okay, you're going to get it more this way. Oops, sorry about that. Um, baby down here in a nice comfortable way. Can not turn out. So you hide it with a little squeegee. So bring this down. You get the baby in your crook of your arm, get nice and comfy. Tuck his hands in because they do like to sort of tear things out. And then introduce the bottle to the baby by tapping the bottom of the lip or the side of the mouth. So there's a rooting reflex here, baby will turn towards it. So just tapping it there and if they're a bit in you know a reluctant just squeeze a little bit of milk there and tap here and they will turn into it and bite in do do, do be careful do be gentle the baby's mouth is very tender you want to um always make sure the teeth in the right place obviously but if you try to be careful don't get frustrated because if you force it it can slide up here and that's random and if you turn that it's very, very, um, it's not nice. It's really not good. And millions of you won't do that. But just sometimes, just be very careful. Get in the gums. Be very careful. Um, in the middle of feeds, uh, we, uh, in between, especially in warm weather, we recommend uh, offering cool boiled water. Now, I, you did mention my, or hear me mention at the very beginning, when I said my grandma lost a child. Uh, with incorrect uh, milk and uh, of course nowadays that won't happen our formula milk is really well formulated but at the end of the day it is still cow's milk that is being formulated for babies in bottle feeding as you know you don't get the antibodies but a happy mother and a happy baby are worth an awful lot Cool boiled water, they shouldn't drink any more than two ounces. That means they're hungry. Sometimes a very hot day, uh, you know, you've, you've had a feed, baby's fractures off the water, they can simply be thirsty. For breastfeeders, you're drinking and the milk gets um, diluted. But for bottle feeders, you have to think that little bit extra because it's always the same, the delivery is always the same every time. So cool boiled water, nothing else in it, just cool boiled water in these early days. Demand feeding is what we do. Um, back in the old days, great grannies or grannies will say, oh, you just feed them every two hours and put them down. It is not like that. And in the next uh, video, I will discuss how a baby's, the size of baby's tummy, and I'll explain to you why it's like that. I'll discuss a little bit about poo, which is just such a fascinating.
feeling subjects. Um, when you when you get to when you get to feeding, isn't it? Just you never think you're that excited about this, but my goodness, it's extremely important. So in the next half, we will continue. Talk to you shortly.